Welcome to the Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by Omvic and Crown. I'm joined today by Neil Verano. He's the editor of Driving.ca at the National Post. Nice and Ron here. Corbett, he's a staff writer with the APA. We are talking about car shows and new cars today. I'm glad I've got the, both of you on because, Ron, you're the writer. You're running around looking at all these new cars. Neil, you decide what goes into the biggest paper in Canada at this point when it comes to the drive section. I'm going to start with you and then move to you in a moment. I promise I'll get to you, Ron. How do you, car show season. Yes. I hate car shows. <laughs> I make no bones about it. You don't send me to car shows. It's you're, fine. He's my boss. You're my boss. <laughs> I don't like them. Why are they important, though? Well, they are important because, at least right now, uh, car companies uh, use these to make a big reveal. Uh, and traditionally, it's always been a very uh, fancy thing, you know, right from the, the 50s, the 40s, all on up. Uh, they introduce their new cars to the public there with a big flourish of the, the wrap coming off the car and, and all that stuff. Uh, so it's, it's important because you can see what's coming up in the next, I don't know, six months, eight months, something like that. It's important for car companies. The thing is, car shows are slightly getting on the wane. Car companies are actually going to different areas. Uh, the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, for example, is a big area where uh, the car companies are now making a bigger presence there. Because we're seeing the pushover into the tech, which is sure. more computer than car-based. Sure. So, Ron, when you're at a show, what are you telling readers? Are you saying, this is what you can buy today? What about concept cars, though? The cars that look like uh, it, it, way in the future. Some of them well, happen. So, so some, of them, some of them can be really interesting. Uh, there were a couple of Toyota ones last year that were sort of like, oh, OK, that's, that's quite fascinating. But most of the time, I'm, I'm talking about stuff that's about to come out. And some shows, if you go to the New York show, for example, you can see something that may not be coming out on the street for a year. So, you know, you can, you can have a look at it, you can romp around in it, you can take notes and stuff. So, um, so there's a practical side, which yeah, is, I'm going to buy a Camry this spring. And I, there's the dreamer side, which is maybe this is what's coming well, out. Well, and, and there's something like, oh, okay, well, you know, the, the, the new Malibu is coming out um, 18 months from now, but they've already shown mm -hmm. it, and we can give you some impressions on it. Sometimes, also, the uh, practical and dreamer side kind of intersect, where there might be a, a concept car from a car company, and it's sort of a vague indication of what is actually going to hit showrooms in maybe the next few years or something like that. It, it could show a design language. The uh, uh, Mazda Kai, for example, at the yeah. Toyota Motor Show, I think it, it's a beautiful concept, and it really shows what, what the next Mazda 3, I think, is going to look like. Yeah, the, they, had a, they had a version of the... Mazda 6 as a show car about a year before it came out and, and when it came out the only thing different was the mirrors I think. Mm -hmm. like, That's I think you pointed to the biggest thing I've seen about the past 10 years was the concept cars 10 years ago were like somebody just made up what, what would the coolest yeah, yeah, thing yeah. in the world be. Never came close to what was materializing sure. a few years down the road. Now it's closer, the time frame's shorter and the actual cars are closer to those concepts Very than they much. ever used to be. Yeah because I think they found a way to mass produce some of it. Right, yes, yes. Uh, uh, it's easier to produce these, these crazy concepts, uh, but also I think it's, it's a way for car companies to gauge uh, uh, like what the public, the buying public feels about it. If they really like this, then they might, might, be the way they might actually yeah. go more production. And if the public hates it, then they have that uh, fallback with, to say, well, it's just it's a concept. Just concept. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, as an editor, what do you put in the paper? Are you going after the candy that is going to make people click on it, or is this still, or is the car show still a good source of information for buyers as well as lookers? Uh, buyers, I would say, buyers only if you were actually at the show, and and only if you're looking for a car and you kind of narrow down what you're looking for. A car show for the public is a way for you to sit in a car. You've got this. Mazda here, sit in the car. You've got this Honda over here, sit in the car. So you can feel it. And you can feel it, look at it in front of you and stuff like that. And you can all do that in a few hours instead of driving all over yeah. town. Uh, um, as far as uh, uh, information is, uh, goes, uh, yeah, it, it kind of shows what the future is. It's more what the future is bringing. Production cars, uh, if they are revealed at a car show, um, invariably they'll be coming a few months down the road at the very least. So this is your first hit at the information. You go back, you can write this up so we can look at them yeah. and then read about them, and that's where the It's a very happens. brief first look without yeah. driving it, without 
having other information about it. It's, it's like, here it is, builds some anticipation, I suppose. Okay. We're going to be back in a minute. We'll be talking about what has been unveiled so far at the car shows this season. So Lemonade Car Show will be back after this message. Welcome back to the Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by Omvik and Crown. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. I'm joined by Neil Verano. He's the editor of Driving.ca, the National Post, and Ron Corbett. He's the staff writer for the APA. We're talking car shows and new cars and what's coming out. You were at which car show? I was at, well, I was at the uh, AJAC um, Test Fest. Okay, and what were you looking at? What, what stood did I out see for there? You? Uh, well, actually, um, the new Kia Rio, um, you know, I have to say, you don't really need anything more. It's you know it's quick, it's quiet, it's it's roomy, it's comfortable, um, and you know for the money, uh, unless you need more space, you don't need to buy a car that's more expensive. I, I think it's exactly what you say. For the money, that is an amazing car. Yeah. And both Kia and uh, its uh, sister company Hyundai have like for the last ten years been topping reliability reports. Uh, JD Power and such. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my third Elantra. Uh, exact. There you go. I, um, my I, sister's all driving. Well, I told my mother to buy a Hyundai. Did so, she? You know. Yes. Yes, oh, she did. Good. Okay, Amazingly cool. enough. I remember, we had this conversation. Right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think it's a great car and especially a great price. And and then you've got that uh, quality that well, is backing like up. The, the thing feels like anvil solid, right? Sure. There's no squeaks. There's no rattles. Um, you know, it's it's really it's a really decent honest. car. It's amazing how far small cars have come in the last oh, like 10, uh, 10 years or so. Right? Yeah. And 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 lots of stuff like you know heated seats mm. and AC and you can get navigation. Sure. And, yeah. You know, it's just yeah. really cool. Yeah. No, that's I I'm amazed at what you can get for twenty under twenty in there. That's a nice price point. Yes. What else? Okay, I uh, saw the uh, the Volkswagen Atlas. Now it was introduced um, in Montreal last year, but it just sort of went on sale in uh, the late spring. Um, styling is personal, of course. I think it looks really homely, and and the the interior is kind of dull, and and finish isn't that great, but really roomy, really comfortable, and on the road, it's. It's really great, fantastic now, dynamics, great ride. What's Atlas going up against? What's Volkswagen? Uh, well, it would be uh, Highlander, uh, Pilot, Explorer, that, that you know, uh, three row. And you, you talk about the style, and you think about all of those vehicles, and they all generically look the same, uh, really. And, and I don't know how you can get away from that in, in a large SUV format, even a small SUV format. It's, but all cars look the same. Once they got rid of a gremlin, it was all downhill. <laughs> Bring back the gremlin. What about the pacer? Or the pacer, yeah. The pacer. AMC yes. knew how to do And the matador, cars. Had, come on. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, it, it's, um, it looks like a Volkswagen. It has their, their current, you know, the gigantic grill and all that yeah. sort of stuff. It's very square. It's very imposing looking. But uh, it really, like, when you get in it and you start driving it, it's like, this car is really together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, and it, it's a brand new segment for Volkswagen uh, well, right now. Yeah, they, they, they've, like, everyone else has been in there for years, and, and yes. they've just been letting sales just go. And, well, and, and it's really great to see them say, okay, you know, we need to be in this market. Yeah. And, and SUVs especially. Porsche, Maserati. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. going after the SUVs? Right. It's uh, Jaguar. Everyone wants Well, the money. they make the money. I mean, uh, As long profits. as gas is free until <laughs> gas but, but, is But, you properly know, you priced. get into the, the cars that Neil was mentioning and the people who buy them well they're going to have an expense account or they're going to have a company gas card mm. or whatever so that doesn't really yeah. matter and in this market it's a bit different for we're sure we're such good environmentalists aren't we mm. we just Fantastic. don't care yes. Yes. Yeah. we all say one thing and then we do another it's true yeah okay public. one more yeah. uh, okay a honda accord <laughs> um it's really really slick uh, the, the current civic looks really Dramatic, but maybe too gargoyly, like too many mm. things happening. Mm -hmm. the, with the Accord, they've just, it's all gone, and it's just absolute slickness. Um, it's really beautiful inside and out. The interior is top notch. Finally, they got rid of that, that horrendous screen, and they have a s nice screen with, with uh, buttons on the sides and two knobs. So, like, it's, Go it's really simple volume to use. Knob. Volume okay. and tuning. Volume has to be a knob. Uh, so, the Civic that you mentioned, first of all, uh, uh, Unconventional is a nice way to put it. I'm glad that they didn't 
bring that sort of styling uh, language to the accord. Uh, and uh, it doesn't have a, a volume knob, and it's one of the uh, veins yeah. of your existence, apparently. Terrible, yeah. <laughs> terrible. But it, it, like you know, it's just a different Canadian experience going through the uh, the, the Tim Hortons drive-through. Yeah, you happen. put the window down, and the speaker comes on. It's sort of like, well, how do I turn the turn the radio down? Oh, just wait. So. We're complaining about complaints we have for a week at a time. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly. That's we're here to tell you, though, that it needs to have that. That's yeah, our job. Um, so, so it really, um, um, it's got the 1.5 turbo, the one I drove, uh, more than adequately quick and, and quiet on the highway, but I always find that engine with the CVT a bit droney, so mm -hmm. it, this is the case. And massive back seat. It's hmm. like just absolutely huge. Okay, so we've got the, the Accord... Um, the Camry styling was significantly changed over the yeah. past year. So is this to keep in line? Yeah, well, they're both releasing at the same time, which yeah. it'll be really interesting. They're both, everyone always says, oh, sedans are dead. Well, both cars are selling um, 15,000 or so each in Canada every year. So that's not something to sneeze at. So, mm -hmm. so there's still a, a very steady clientele for that. So that's been a big part of the market, and they're going to make I'm yeah, sure they don't. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it? in the States, obviously, it's... Volume-wise, it, it's a bigger, uh, it's, right. a, it's a bigger number. Okay. When we come back, we're going to keep talking about some of these new cars and what we like and don't like, including volume knobs. Lemonade Car Show. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back to Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by Envic and Crown. I'm speaking with Neil Verano, the editor of Driving.ca, which is National Post, and Ron Corbett, staff writer for the APA. We're talking about car shows and new cars, and we're having fun. What are we going to talk about, trash or praise next? Uh, well, we can talk about the new Camry, since we just mentioned it in the uh, Oh, and last I brought segment. it up and blew it up. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it, it, as you said, it's much more adventurous looking outside than before. So it, it looks, um, it still looks conservative, but it looks like, you know, sporty conservative. Um, the interior is really wild. It's like really mm -hmm. quite uh, quite expressive, like really you know weird angles and and strange you know strange uh, joinings of things and whatever. But uh, nice materials, uh, you know, really great seats. Um, the back seat is actually not as roomy as the Accord. The Accord sort of you know just uh, totally totally blows that out of the water. Um, but uh, I drove the hybrid, and I have to say, the powertrain worked really well and. Um, um, you know, nice yeah. ride and handling and much all that. Much sportier than uh, yeah, previous yeah, yeah. Camrys, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, a Camry 10 years ago, and it was like, you know, it was it was very, very, um, uh, very, very stayed, uh, stayed right. and, and very soft, right? Well, now, Honda and Honda invented incremental change. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, so it it's, it uh, looks good, and, um, you know, the interior is, is quite, quite different. Right. Um, but nice materials and stuff, and, and certainly the hybrid powertrain, in this car works really nicely. I think so. Toyota was looking to satisfy their customer base for the regular Camry and then maybe go a little bit further with well, the sportiness. I, I, I think a lot of people are sold on Toyota, but previously they would say, yeah. oh yeah, okay, well, you know, if I want to buy a 95 Buick Regal, I'll buy one. Sure. Uh, but but, uh, <laughs> but they, have, uh, they have changed the dynamics and yes. you, can, you can get a, a more traditional softer ride with with the the, uh, the LE models like the L series and now they have the the parallel sort of S series which is which has a sportier well, bike Well that's the good so. thing Buick was there so they could be the Buick. Sure. That, that's and true. Then, Although uh, the th the thing is about cars these days is that many cars can be both. It can be yeah. a soft uh, yeah. you know luxury cruiser and then it can be let's say a little bit sportier in the corners yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. It's it's not like before yeah. uh, not like you know 10 years ago. We are either one or the other. A lot so. of times they're still battling their own stereotypes. Sure. Which they capitalized on for a long yes. time. I'm not talking about Buick or Lincoln, but it's possible that what set them up and did well, now they're trying to break it, and it's like, you know what? People like them. Uh, so. but, but if it's a changing market, I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Everyone's going to SUVs and stuff, so yeah. maybe they feel like they need to have to draw in more people just to combat that market. Okay. But it, in a lot of ways, we've kind of gone too far into the sportiness mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people are complaining, especially if you live in an urban area with crappy pavement. Like, yeah. you know, you, you want a bit it's of comfort. A tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, That's so uh, Alfa Romeo Giulia. I've mm -hmm. been hearing so much about this, and none of it has been very good, frankly. Uh, I I love the looks of the car. I was really hoping I was pulling for Alfa, but all uh, all I read about it, or not all, but uh, 
Electrical problems, electrical problems all over the place. And this is reviewers in the states, and here this and is not the well. same review car. This yes, is yes, yes, lots different of cars, cars, different cars. I used to own an Alfa Romeo, a 2002 uh, Spider, and uh, it had ongoing electrical issues. Imagine that, where I would press on the brake and the radio would go off, and the <laughs> uh, fuel filler door would pop open. <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> is, how does that Only happen? on certain stations? Or <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't check. That. I didn't check. <laughs> but I mean, those kind of things are ridiculous, but they're, fam or they're what Italian cars are famous for, that kind of thing. So they need to sort that stuff out. When That's you were driving, sure. was there any, any of the problems we're hearing in no, your it was, quick it drive? Was a, <laughs> it was a, a faultless 40 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, uh, and, and driving, well... You know, I have to say it was just just like the ultimate dynamic experience, right? Mm -hmm. If you rolled over a loony uh, on the street, you could probably tell what year it was. Mm -hmm. The steering was really sensitive. It's really cat-like. It's just uh, amazing. And when you put it in, like they have a sport mode, and it's just sort of like, just uh, like uh, you don't even have to do it. You just think it, and the car's doing it. It's really, really good. But um, the engine, to me, when it's idling, it sounds like a diesel. And and until you reach a certain point. Um, the the sound the, the, the sound is, is not what I, I was hoping for. So usually we tell people, make sure you test drive. A lot of people don't test drive anymore. They just mm -hmm. buy cars, especially iconic cars that they want it. And this is a case where I'm going to say, read a bunch of reviews, uh, not just yes. one or two, mm -hmm. because you, you can't have stick reviewers who just get a bum car or they don't like yeah. it or something. But I'm unfortunately, like you said, we're all waiting for this to be like, awesome. Uh, and yes, yeah, now yeah. reviews are stacking up. They're, they're having problems. The reviewers are having issues. So even if you drive it like Ron did for 40 minutes and love it, please be careful. Please read other reviews and please keep an eye on it and really look at extended warranties and things like well, that. And if, and you're and if you want to one, I, I would just I would just say lease it. Lease it. And, and exactly. there's also the whole you know um, what's going to happen with the the franchise in the future and all the rest of it. So. Yeah. At least in North America here, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I. I hope they sort it out because it's a great car yeah. uh, to drive. It's, it's yeah. really, really old school Euro, really sporty, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's coming into a very, uh, you know, competitive segment against BMW, yeah. Mercedes, yeah. and Audi. But, but so, it, like, it's I think with Volvo and maybe less or so with, with Alpha, um, they have an advantage in that they're not German. Like, like yes. there, there's, but you go anywhere and, and it's like three series or like knee deep in parking lots and, yeah. and C class and whatever. <laughs> and if you have something that's European, but it's, it's something different, well, you know, maybe people are ready for that. Well, we've been romancing it, so hopefully they get their problems sorted out. That's all the time we have, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, Neil Verano, Ron Corbett. We'll be back after this break with our mechanic, Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by Omvic and Crown. Welcome back to the Lemonade Car Show. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. I'm joined now by Georgini, the president of the APA, and our mechanic on schedule, Brian Early. How are you, Brian? Nice to have yeah, you back fine. again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This show has been about new cars, and a lot of times when you buy a new car, you think, ha ha, I'm done with the service thing great, forever. We like to think forever. Well, it's now, often a, a big motivator why you got out of your old car because of the unpredictability of the repairs. So okay. you have something new, and you figure oil changes, and you're done. So having said that, what should you be looking for? Now that you have a new car, what's the best way to keep it in pristine shape? Well, you know, the manufacturer knows the car best. They do have a maintenance schedule in the owner's manual somewhere. Best to uh, give that a good glance. And in a lot of cases, there will be two schedules. It'll be what they call normal and severe. And if you look really closely at the severe stuff, it's typically stuff that you encounter in Canada, like uh, varied temperatures, lots of idling, rough road conditions, any of that kind of stuff. So We're severe. We're, we're, we're pretty much severe by default. So it's safe. I think it's smart to presume that that is the schedule you should be following. Ideally. So, and the way it works is uh, you have minor and more major. Mm -hmm. So the minor is every six months. The major could be annual. It could be sometimes only after two years. So your first services are not expensive. It's worth keeping the records because that helps you when you have to sell the car. Also, if you're being upsold something because you didn't realize the person at the counter is getting a commission for selling you service. Uh, you can always go back and check and see what you have done before. So m maybe you don't need that oil treatment yeah, or fuel injector flush. Big distinction every, between every recommended and required. Okay, well, and I'm going to ask you both this because you know what, 
I, we, I tell people owner's manual tells you what the manufacturer requires for that vehicle that they have warrantied. It's not, and it's also to be fair, if you're not slightly technical or cars actually don't interest you, mm -hmm. which I think is fair, um, some of the manuals are not easy to follow. First of all, it's in a different book, it's in a section in the back, it's not really designed to be a, that user friendly. But so many dealers, they have their own proposed schedules that don't match anything in any but of those books. That's easy to use because there's a big poster, there's checkoffs. Yeah. Uh, I, I have seen it where they actually put a supplemental little book in with the owner's manual for recommended services. And one that you can even get stamped, for example. Mm -hmm. That's the more marks. helpful way. Because yeah. I feel there, a lot of times for consumers or people who maybe aren't into cars, you get guilty. You're thinking, if I don't do this, I'm going to void my warranty. If I don't replace those well, wiper blades. This is the blades, question you need to ask the service advisor. You need to be frank with them and just ask them, is this something that is required? or something you just recommend. And a lot of times the recommended service will, will be <laughs> well short of the manufacturer's interval. You know, spark plugs in half their lifetime, that kind of thing. And or worse, we saw in our own, you know, our undercover work, we would get like, what are the Toyota plugs are good for now? Uh, oh, a lot of the stuff now is 160, 196,000. Yeah. And they would replace them with a lower quality spark plug that you would have to take out sooner because I think they're iridium coated or something, the Toyota. Anyway, yeah. it was an example. We happened to use a Toyota. We got back plugs that were worse than what we had. Long run would need to come out sooner than the plugs that were in the car. And, and there's also commissions being, this is a big commission industry. There's also commissions being paid yes. at, yes. at yes. a lot of points sadly, of sell. You, yeah, well, the, sadly. I mean, most people expect that a car person selling your vehicle is on commission. Yeah. They don't realize the person at the counter in the service department in a larger shop, particularly dealership, is also on commission. Well, George, you'd have a better idea of this too. The, the margins, the profit margins on new cars aren't what they were once upon a time. So let's let's face it, the service department is actually making money for the dealership. And, you know, and they're, they're pushing required to. Yeah. They're they're pushing very hard to to encourage people to bring their vehicles back to the dealership, especially after the warranty expires. Right. So and the other thing, Lorraine, on the other side is while they're upselling you on junk, like miracle fluids and stuff, important service that you know we were talking about um, isn't done, like your rear brakes. The calipers may need to yep. be. Yeah, there's there's a legitimacy to doing things like brake services. Maybe not, you know, every We're ten thousand k. Shh, shh, but, yeah. actually, but actually, you've, it's basically a brake job with no parts. Take it apart, clean all the gunge that builds up in them out, lubricate it all, put no it back together service. again. And your brake rear brakes will go over a hundred thousand k possibly with that, yeah, or eighty thousand, depending on the vehicle. Certainly, yeah. it, it will extend the life regardless. I mean, once the brakes start to bind up in there, they don't release properly, they don't apply properly, and it, it shortens the life. Another service uh, that we see is often forgotten, the cabin air filter. Yes. Yes. Well, isn't it true? Some of them are easy to replace. Some of them, have, the it's dash has to come off. But to, it's overlooked. Yeah. That's the, we, we having also having had changed it on a bunch of Nissan vehicles where it's parallel to the firewall and you have to jam yourself in a footwell, it's not something you'd really want to have to do a lot of, but yeah, it's, it's still in there. And My it's sister had a vehicle, they charged her three times for carbon filters and it's on her bills because she keeps them all and then when it was finally done it had never been done an APA mechanic did it and showed her the filter and said this is the original one that came with the car they'd never done it and she had all her papers that said it had been done over nice. and over again. That's a bit nasty. Isn't mm -hmm. that very nice? Yeah. yeah. You can ask for the old parts back. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable but I would tell you most customers who do don't know what to make of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It lo just looks a, hmm, looks complicated in that bag. But you could ask for it. Well, that's why I find a mechanic you trust and deal with them for all the yeah. stuff, maintenance as well as you know fixing big things. I'm a big fan of maintenance. It's a lot cheaper. What do you than use to find a mechanic? Like a metal detector? Mm -hmm. or I use the APA, George. Yeah, but you can't find yeah. mechanics in most larger business. You're not even allowed to talk to that person. My you're, you're, you can call me. I'll, I'll tell you the name okay. of a good mechanic. I'm in Burlington. I'll tell people to go to mechanics good. in Burlington. But so. you know, in a dealership or in a larger shop with you know nine or ten garage doors, the people yeah. managing it There's do not want you. Uh, interfering with valuable time of the, the one, the goose that lays the golden egg in the shop. Everybody else is a cost. Yeah. The mechanic is actually bringing money in. Yeah, the truth, there's truth to that. Thank yeah. you both. That's all the time we have for the Lemonade Car Show. I'd like to thank Georgini and Brian Early and you viewers.